If you don't like who you are, plan a funeral for the old you. And when I say this, I mean burn all of the preconceived beliefs you can identify within yourself that you no longer resonate with, burn them. Because they're no longer needed for the next part of your journey. They're no longer needed for this new you you want to become. Get rid of that shit, okay? Get rid of it. And you're like, okay, Natalie, what do I do? Like, how do I do that? Like, I'm so hopeless. I don't know how to, like, create a new version of me and whatever. The thing about creating a new version of you is you already change. Every single day, you are already evolving into a different person. Stop thinking of yourself as a fixed object because you are a developing concept. You are in constant evolution. We are not and will never be in control of the fact that we change. Every single day we age. Every single day a new wrinkle pops up on my face. I'm 20 years old. Calm down, Natalie. But you get what I'm saying. Every single day you are making small changes that turn into big changes. This is precisely why every few months you look back at your old self and you cringe. I don't really resonate with that anymore. Embrace that cringe. The fact that you don't resonate with who you used to be is a good thing. But sometimes we don't change. Sometimes we feel stuck in our ways and that's what I'm going to be talking talking about in this video. I'm gonna be real, a lot of the time people are like, just create a new version of yourself, you know? Just jump into a new version of yourself. Just wake up one day and go, yeah, I'm a new person. <laughs> and I mean, let's not get ahead of ourselves because that's kind of how it works, but that's also not kind of how it works. Changing into the person you wanna be takes consistency. It takes discipline. It takes looking at all the parts of yourself that you don't wanna look at. Just as the trees bloom in spring and the leaves fall in autumn, you are in a constant cycle of death and rebirth and this video is going to teach you how to embrace it rather than resist it. First things first, let's talk about the change itself. If you want to change yourself, do it. Well, Natalie, why are you telling people on the internet to change themselves? Isn't that toxic? We're perfect just the way we are. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> I don't mean to be mean, but nobody's ever just perfect just the way they are. I never want to get to a point in my life where I'm just perfect just the way I am. I'm, I'm not talking about on like a spiritual level, yes. I am beautiful and perfect just the way I am in certain levels. Like, I'm not gonna beat myself up over the things I can't change of myself. But what I am gonna do is identify the bullshit I'm hanging on to, identify all the crappy things that I'm doing with my life and go, eh, this is kind of corny. This is kind of cringe, honestly. I'm not saying beat yourself up and tell yourself you're worth nothing. That's not what I mean by change yourself. I mean, identify why you feel like you're worthless in the first place, because that's already something you believed about yourself. So why are you still hanging on to that belief? Hold on, okay, mm, chill out, chill out. You know, I know you think I'm attacking you or whatever, but like, I'm, I'm really not. And I can attack you if I want. This is my channel. <laughs> <So> <laughs> First things first, your desire for change is not toxic. If you want to change yourself, do it, but also know why you're doing it. You have to evaluate, okay, is the reason I want to change because Susan told me that what I'm doing with my life isn't good and I care too much about what she thinks, or is the reason why I want to change more of an intrinsic reason? Identify what is inside of you that wants to change. What is your motive? If you're changing yourself in the hopes to be accepted by others, you're probably not going to get too far with that motivation. And most of you would agree, you know, it's not good to change yourself for others, but I actually have a little bit of a different take on it. Hear me out, hear me out. It is a motivation. If you want to change yourself for someone, that is something that can motivate you. For example, if you want to start going to the gym, one of your motivations might be you want to be seen a certain way by other people, but that cannot be your only motivation why you're doing something. When you rely solely on external validation to motivate you, it's giving someone the floor to invalidate your real achievements, which is why you have to have a combination of both intrinsic and extrinsic motivations for why you wanna make this change. And this is my hot take. I do not think it's healthy to fully eliminate external validation as a motivator in your life. Some days you're not gonna get out of bed and go to the gym just because, oh, I wanna change. You're not gonna get out of bed and go to the gym. You're gonna go to the gym because you want to prove that one person wrong because they told you you couldn't do it. And I'm not saying it's sustainable. I'm not saying to rely solely on external validation, but on those days where you're off, on those days where you're not feeling it, absolutely. But never let your need for external validation trump your own intrinsic motivation to make this change. I believe it should be like 80% intrinsic motivation and then 20% extrinsic motivation when you're not feeling it. You know what I mean? Stop shaming yourself for your desires to be seen. Every single time I see one of these videos of like transform into the new you, the person's talking about this is how I stopped giving a f
And it's like, oh, really? <laughs> You're on social media, why? You're making this video, why? See, every single person on this earth cares about what other people think of them. It's in our human nature. That part of your brain that cares about what other people thinks of you is like that friend you can't always hang around, okay? Because after a while of hanging around this friend, you just want to punch it in the face. But you know, she serves her purpose when she needs to tell you to, you know, pick up on social cues. You get what I'm saying? But you need to check that voice, okay? Sometimes it says some bullshit that's not even true. It's like that compulsive liar friend of yours. Seriously though, like think about that side of your brain that always cares about what other people think. Think of it as just like that really shitty friend sometimes. Instead of resisting this part of you that cares about what other people think, embrace it, analyze it, and see what it's meant to tell you. See what it's meant to show you. Think of little you. When you were a kid, you were taught an idea of your place in the world. You were taught to feel shame for certain behaviors and then taught to accentuate others in order to be accepted, in order to be loved by others. Changing yourself is not ridding yourself of what you were conditioned to be shameful of, but analyzing it and accepting that part of yourself back into your life. Learning how to implement those shameful parts of yourself back into your life. Now that I've established that, let's talk about awareness. So a lot of people are aware of their desire to change long before they actually implement the changes they want into their life. And that's often because of these mental and emotional blocks that stop them from just doing the damn thing. You know, we always get in our own way. We tend to avoid the work that is actually going to help us achieve those changes in our life and tend to keep in this like cycle of like a holding pattern almost. And I kid you not, every single time I'm in a funk, every single time I'm in a holding pattern, it's often because I'm not seeing something clearly. I'm not seeing a certain limiting belief I have that I need to let go of in order to enter into this new period of my life. And before we can actually move on from that holding pattern and create this new you instead of just being like, yeah, I'm a new me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, bitch. I went to Bath and Body Works and got myself a new candle. I'm a new me. <laughs> Before we do all of that, we have to identify what is within the limiting belief that's keeping us from moving forward. First things first, you're irrational, okay? You need to get this into your mind that some parts of your brain are just irrational and you need to start poking holes in why you feel certain things. For example, let's say you want to start a little business or something. You want to start posting your stuff online, right? And you fear what other people think of you. You're like, you know, what if I don't succeed? What if other people don't like me after that? It's not that you believe that you're incapable. It's just that you value their opinion over yours. In economics, there's such thing as opportunity cost. And if you're wanting to achieve a certain thing in your life, you have to weigh out what is the cost of achieving that thing? What is the cost of my new life? If the cost is you're gonna look stupid with your friends and your friends aren't gonna care about you anymore, well, were they even really your friend? Because this is actually a desire you really, really want in your life. You see what I mean? Let's say you wanna go to the gym. An opportunity cost might be you need to get up in the morning and stop sleeping in until 11 p.m. Well, Natalie, you make it sound so easy. I never said it was easy. I never said it was easy to identify false beliefs and actually break them. And oftentimes you actually have to do the thing before you actually break the habit, okay? It's not gonna be like, yeah, let me just let go of this. Let me let go of this. Cause you can make up so many different things to let go of. And at some point it just becomes an excuse for making the changes you know you need to make. Write down pros and cons. Seriously, I, I know it's like, oh my God, I don't wanna write down my feelings, <laughs> whatever write it down, okay? I get a journal. If you don't already have a journal and you're on my channel, I don't know what you're doing here, but like, girl, go check out the shadow work video or something. Let's start there. But start journaling about these irrational fears. Argue with yourself in your head. Sometimes I really have to argue with certain parts of my brain because I'll get in my own damn way. So when I say make a funeral for the old you, I want you to take three months or even less. It could be a month. Depending on what you're trying to change, set out a specific time for yourself to just grieve, to grieve the old you, okay? Because a lot of the times we're trying to jump into this new reality when it's like, mm, you're not there yet, okay? You haven't done the work yet. It's like water in a lake, right? There's a dam and that dam goes to a river. And so the river is like the new you that you want to become, but the lake is like the huge dam of who you are. The God, God, God damn it, it's you. <laughs> Oh my god. What if the people controlling the dam just decided to let out all the water and they just didn't give a fuck and they flooded all the river? 
what would happen? <laughs> Number one, you'd be flooded, okay? You'd be overwhelmed with all the things you need to just fix about yourself. And trying to view yourself as a project is a whole nother video. Let me talk about that. You're not a project that needs to be fixed, okay? But you're not giving yourself time to actually analyze the changes you need to make, okay? And one of my biggest pet peeves watching videos like this is seeing people being like, just detach from the old you. And it's like, First of all, that is not what detachment is. Let me let me talk on that for a second. Let's talk about detachment. Detachment is not learning how to not give a fuck. It's learning where to direct your fuck, okay? <laughs> it's not just, I don't give a fuck today and now I'm a new me. You look crazy. <laughs> you are not trying to eliminate all the fucks altogether. You're just trying to redirect where you give your fuck to. Right now, you're giving your fucks to other fucks who don't even matter. In order to fully detach from the past version of yourself, you need to identify why that version of you was so inadequate in the first place. Or else you're just trying to run away. Or else it's just escapism. So take the next three months, clean out your closet, look at yourself in the f mirror, and identify all the things that you don't want to take with you to this new version of yourself. Go through that process. And when you're ready to let something go, maybe open one of the floodgates. Identify those toxic habits you don't need anymore and change them. And don't just be like, oh, I'm gonna make a funeral for the old me and post all of it on social media because you look like a clown, okay? You're not changing for yourself. Again, 20% external validation, 80% intrinsic motivation just from you. You gotta wanna make this change for yourself more than wanting to make that change for others. If you let other people in on it and you get some kudos and it makes you feel good one day, that's good. That's healthy motivation. That's learning how to healthily implement external validation into your life. Take three months to validate yourself and then come back to this video. Take three months to identify what was wrong with the old you and then come back to this video. And listen, bitch, I get it. I've been in the same exact position where I didn't want to be myself. I wanted to be anybody else but myself. And that's okay to feel that way. As long as you feel it, feel every single aspect of whatever feeling you are feeling. There is no way to cheat yourself into a new reality. There is no way to cheat yourself into a new version of you. You can't get around looking at yourself and your own bullshit, but just know the fact that you became aware of all this stuff coming up is because you have the tools to solve it. You know, like in Mickey Mouse Clubhouse, when they're like, where's the mystery mouse katool? And the mystery mouse katool is right, right in there in front of you. It's because you have the tools to solve it. You have the mystery mouse katool and everyone around you is yelling at you like, Bitch, it's right there, it's right in there. <laughs> Stop using this idea of detachment to avoid looking at yourself and identifying the parts of you you don't like and make a funeral for the old you. Burn that hoe. I hate that bitch. I'm sick of her ass. <laughs> I'm sick of her ass. I'm sick of that shit. No. Anyways, you guys, I'm ending this video off here. I'll see you guys in the next one. Become the new you. Commit to that change, bitch. Bye, guys.